This is an Ari Alexa classic. This is one of the most innovative and legendary digital cinema cameras ever produced, and it really paved the way for all of Ari's future cameras. Now, when this camera was released, it had a price tag of $66,000 for just the camera body. However, this camera was released in 2010, so nowadays, being over 10 years old, you can pick these up used for right around four to $6,000. And then this, this is an interesting camera. So technically this is a Canon EOS M. This was released in 2012. It was a entry level mirrorless camera from Canon. And you can see it literally fits right in the palm of my hand. However, there's a reason that I'm specifically comparing this camera to an Ari Alexa and calling this a baby Ari Alexa or a fake Ari Alexa. So right off the bat, it doesn't sound like anything special at all. However, some of you might know where I'm going with this. You can actually install a firmware hack into this camera called Magic Lantern. Now, once you install this firmware hack onto the Canon EOS M, it essentially unlocks a huge amount of features that Canon never included with this camera. Now, it honestly includes way too many features to even mention in this video. However, the main one that most people use, including me, is raw video recording. So you can legitimately record raw video internally without an external recorder onto the standard SD card in multiple different frame rate, resolution, and aspect ratio combinations on this tiny, pretty much pocket-sized camera from Canon. Now you can pick this camera up for right around $200 if you really search for it. However, the popularity of this camera has really skyrocketed in the last um, six months to a year and it's a lot harder to find now. I've still seen these on eBay and mpb.com and even keh.com for that $200 mark. However, if you are in a rush to get one of these and don't have the time to really go searching for one, uh, I might be closer to that $300 price point. Now with both of these cameras, I have a huge list of other videos kind of going more in depth on them and all the other aspects of these cameras. So if you don't really know about these two cameras and want to learn more about them, I'm going to link all the videos I've made about both of them down in the description. I would definitely recommend checking those out first. Now I also do have sort of a part one to this video that I definitely recommend watching first, even if you do know what both of these cameras are. That video goes a lot more in depth on why I'm actually comparing these two and really what the Canon EOS M can do and how it compares to an Ari Alexa and essentially why I personally call it a baby Ari Alexa. If you enjoy this, I really hope you subscribe and like this video and maybe leave a comment. It'll really help push this video to new audiences. All right, that's it for the introduction. I'm gonna split this video into a bunch of different sections so you can feel free to, you know, go to whichever section you wanna see or, you know, go back and forth between whatever you decide or just watch everything through. Well, without further ado, here's the comparison between an Ari Alexa classic and the $200 fake Ari Alexa. First up, we have resolutions, frame rates, and recording codecs. So I'm gonna read this off my phone because there's a lot of numbers that there's no way I could memorize on this. So starting off with the Ari Alexa Classic. This camera can record in 1920 by 1080p as well as 2K, which is 2048 by 1152 pixels, which is just slightly larger than 1080p video. And you can record this video in ProRes 4444 up to 60 frames per second. However, there is a high speed video upgrade that you can get for this camera and a lot of used ones will have this already installed in them. And with this upgrade, you can record ProRes 4444 2K video and up to 120 frames per second. Now moving on to the Canon EOS M with Magic Lantern installed. Now with this, there's pretty much unlimited different variations of aspect ratios, frame rates, and resolutions. However, there are two modes that I would recommend the most, and I personally think these are pretty much the two best options for this. So the first mode is 1080p 14-bit RAW. So this is 1736 by 976 pixel, 14-bit Magic Lantern video raw up to 30 frames per second. In the next mode, this is the one I personally use the most. This is what claims to be 5K. However, it's not full 5K video. It's actually 
4320 by 1810 pixels in 12-bit Magic Lantern RAW at 24 frames per second. And this 5K mode actually is more cropped in than the 1080p mode, but I'll get into that a little bit later. And so those are the frame rate, resolution, and codec options for these cameras. Now with the Ari Alexa, with an upgrade and with an external recorder, you can record raw footage with it. However, you can't do that internally. And with the Canon EOS M with Magic Lantern, there are some higher frame rate options, I believe up to 48 frames per second. However, they're not gonna be as stable and there will be a lot more issues with continuous recording and things like that with these modes, which is why I personally wouldn't really recommend recording over 30 frames per second. So technically speaking, Magic Lantern video on the EOS M has the Alexa B in terms of you know, recording 5K versus just 2K on the Ari Alexa. However, the Ari Alexa can record up to 60 frames per second or with the high speed upgrade up to 120 frames per second versus 30 frames per second or maybe 48 frames per second with some other drawbacks. All right, next up we have sensor size and crop factor. So starting off with the Ari Alexa, this camera has a Super 35 sensor with about a 1.5 times crop factor. So essentially if you put a 20 millimeter lens on this, it'll essentially have a full frame equivalent of a 30 millimeter field of view. Now something quick to note here is the 2K mode on this camera is actually a slightly wider field of view than the 1080p mode. It's not super noticeable, however, there technically is a wider field of view with the 2K mode versus 1080p. Now moving on to the EOS M, this camera is a little bit more complicated. So from the factory, this camera has a super 35 millimeter sensor with a 1.6 times crop factor. So a slightly higher crop than the Alexa. And that's true with the 1080p raw mode on this camera. It's gonna be that standard 1.6 times crop factor. So a 20 millimeter lens will be just over a 30 millimeter equivalent field of view. However, all the different modes in this camera are gonna have slightly different crop factors. Um, so the 5K mode that I recommend shooting with will actually have a 1.35 times crop added to that already 1.6 times crop. So this is gonna crop in even more substantially onto the already cropped in image. So compared to a full frame camera, the EOS M in the 5K mode will be a lot more cropped in. So with this camera, it'll essentially be a lot harder to get a really wide angle field of view. However, it'll be a lot easier to get a zoomed in field of view, you know, with your telephoto lenses. There'll be a lot more zoomed in than, you know, with the Alexa or a full frame camera especially. All right, next up on the list, we have lens mounts. So the Ari Alexa Classic comes standard with the Ari PL mount. Now this is a professional cinema lens mount. It's really hard to adapt other lenses to PL mount and PL mount lenses are also typically a lot more expensive than other standard lens mounts like Sony E mount or Canon EF mount or something like that. However, you can purchase third party lens mounts that you can attach to this camera. So for example, right here, I have a C7 adapters EF mount. So my Ari Alexa takes Canon EF mount lenses However, this adapter is not cheap in the slightest and pretty much any other third party lens mounts that you can buy for the Alexa Classic are gonna be very, very pricey. So that is definitely something to keep in mind with the Ari Alexa. Now the Canon EOS M actually has a mirrorless lens mount. This is the Canon EF M mount. Now the thing about this and most other mirrorless camera mounts is you can adapt an insane amount of lenses to this mount with very, very inexpensive adapters, which means if you factor in, you know, a lens adapter to whatever lens you wanna use with this, the selection of lenses you can use with this camera are infinitely bigger than with the Ari Alexa Classic. And something else you can actually do with this because of its really short flange distance and just the specific lens mount this has is you can purchase what's called a speed booster, which essentially widens the field of view with a piece of glass and turns this into almost a full frame equivalent with just over a one times crop factor. Now with that, you can't use native Canon EF-M lenses. However, you can get a speed booster with a Canon EF mount, you can get it with a Canon FD mount, and possibly some other mounts as well. So that's actually a really good benefit with this is the ability to use a speed booster to make this almost a full frame equivalent. Also increase the low light abilities, uh, make a shallower depth of field with your really fast lenses, and overall increase the usability of this camera. However, with this video, I'm not gonna be doing any tests with a speed booster. I'm just gonna be doing tests with the standard camera itself. Now it's time to actually go out, record some footage with these cameras, and do some image quality comparisons. So this thing literally, it's like 
10% of the Alexa. Like it barely goes past the lens right there. But this can still record 14-bit raw in 1080p and 12-bit raw in 5K. This doesn't, even, the Alexa doesn't even shoot raw um, without an external recorder and without a license. The Canon EOS with Magic Lantern technically records higher quality video, but obviously it's still nothing compared to the sensor on the Alexa. You know how good that sensor is, but we're about to find out how close they can be. Next up with the comparison is colors. Now while we're on the topic of matching colors between two different cameras, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Cinematch. So Cinematch is a color grading plugin that works with Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, and DaVinci Resolve, and it essentially helps you to easily match up the colors between two separate cameras. So if you've ever been editing a project that was shot on two totally separate cameras, you know that it can be really difficult to get the footage to match up perfectly. So for example, let's push it to the extreme and say you shot a film on both an iPhone and an Ari Alexa. Now right off the bat, these two devices create very different looking images. They have completely different color sciences. And if you just look at the footage back to back, you're gonna easily be able to tell that these are shot on a different camera. However, if we go ahead and load up Cinematch, select the source camera, which in this case is an iPhone, and then select the target camera, which will select the Ari Alexa Mini for this example. Cinematch is gonna work its magic and match these colors up as best as possible. But Cinematch also has a ton of other options for color grading and getting your footage to look as good as possible. So not only is it a great way to match up colors easily between two cameras, you can also use it for pretty much all of your other color grading work as well. Now, if you wanna check out Cinematch, you can use my link down in the description or use code FOXTAIL and it'll give you 10% off both Cinematch and Film Convert Night. So huge thanks to Cinematch for sponsoring this video. Now let's get right back into the comparison. So when it comes to colors, it's no surprise that the Alexa wins hands down. The colors are just a lot punchier right off the bat, and even after spending some time trying to match the EOS M to the Alexa, it just looks a lot more dull. The greens are really where the Alexa excels and they just have this punch to them that honestly looks astonishing. And this is honestly not a surprise at all. The Alexa is known to have amazing colors and the sensor that was designed for this camera went on to be used in multiple other Ari Alexa cameras. So it's safe to say the Alexa wins the color battle hands down, but you can still do lots of fine tuning with the colors with the EOS M because it does shoot in that raw video format. So you still have a lot of flexibility to adjust the colors from the EOS M footage. The Alexa is just in a totally different league and you really just can't beat the Alexa colors. Now the footage you're seeing is actually from a music video that I recently shot for a good friend of mine. And I actually snuck a couple shots from the EOS M into the final music video. And I'm gonna link that down in the description if you wanna support it and go check it out. And also if you wanna look for those hidden $200 Canon EOS M shots in there mixed with the Alexa and Sony a7S III footage that I pretty much shot the rest of the music video on. All right, next up, dynamic range. Now, once again, the Ari Alexa wins hands down here. The Alexa has 14 stops of dynamic range, and the Canon EOS M, this one's a little trickier. Reviews of the standard camera showed between 11 and 12 stops of dynamic range. However, I'm not 100% certain how many more stops of dynamic range the raw video hack unlocks in this camera, if any. However, just by looking at footage, you can definitely tell the Alexa wins hands down. And I think it's safe to say it has about that one to two extra stops of dynamic range versus the Canon EOS M. And again, you can definitely tell the difference in shadow and highlight information between these two cameras. The Alexa footage just keeps so much much more information in it. 
All right, next up for just overall video sharpness, this one is really interesting. So with this, I kept the Alexa in its 2K mode. And then for the EOS M, I tried the 1080p 14-bit RAW as well as the 5K 12-bit RAW modes. So the Alexa in 2K versus the EOS M in 1080p RAW, the Alexa wins hands down in sharpness. The footage is a lot sharper than the EOS M. And then when you switch to 2K with the Alexa and 5K with the EOS M, the EOS M has a much greater resolution than the Alexa. However, it's surprisingly close. I would even say the Alexa is slightly sharper still in 2K versus 5K in the EOS M, but it's much closer than 1080p with the EOS M. And the EOS M also does have a lot more artifacts in its images like noise and grain and just other image artifacts than the Alexa, which also kind of softens up the EOS M footage even more from the Alexa, which is most likely the reason why the 5K on the EOS M is still not quite as sharp as 2K on the Ari Alexa. All right, next up we have rolling shutter performance. Now with this one again, I tested the Alexa in 2K and then I tested the EOS M in both its 1080p 14-bit and 5K 12-bit modes. And the Alexa again wins hands down with both of these modes. The 1080p mode in the EOS M performs fairly decent However, the 5K mode is just complete jello with rolling shutter. I mean, if you look at these freeze frame comparisons between all three of these, um, you can tell the 5K mode on the EOS M is just absolutely terrible. And the Alexa definitely wins hands down. Next up is ISO performance. So the Ari Alexa Classic has a native ISO of 800. And I would say, in my opinion, anything under a thousand ISO is perfectly usable with this camera. And then after a thousand ISO, the noise definitely starts to become really noticeable. However, everybody will have an ISO that they'll feel comfortable using that's, you know, probably different from other people. So I'll let you make this judgment on your own. And then onto the Canon EOS M. This camera has a native ISO of somewhere between 1 and 200. And with this camera, I really wouldn't use any ISO over 400. Even at 400, some noise and grain starts to show up in the images, but anything past that, it gets very extreme. All right, moving on to the audio options with these cameras. So the Ari Alexa has a five pin non-powered XLR input, as well as a three and a half millimeter headphone output. The thing is though, with this XLR input, it's a five pin while a standard XLR is a three pin. So in order to use a standard powered XLR microphone, you're going to need a five pin to three pin adapter as well as some sort of microphone preamp that has phantom power, since this camera also does not have any sort of phantom power built in to power an XLR microphone. So this will add more bulk and weight to your Alexa just to be able to use a standard XLR mic. And then also for any sort of gain adjustments and everything like that, there isn't really any physical buttons on this camera. You're gonna have to dive into the menu to adjust all of these settings. So overall, the Alexa really doesn't have that good of audio options, especially compared to some other cinema cameras like the Sony FX9 and FX6 that have multiple XLR inputs, 
as well as physical buttons and dials for adjusting the gain. And they also have phantom power built into them. And even Canon cinema cameras like the C200 and C300 also have multiple XLR inputs, three and a half millimeter inputs, as well as those physical buttons and dials for adjusting all of your microphone settings. And then onto the Canon EOS M, this is similar to most other mirrorless cameras. It has one single three and a half millimeter microphone input. However, it doesn't have any sort of audio jack or any other audio outputs or inputs. So this three and a half millimeter jack will essentially allow you to use any sort of standard shotgun mic or lavalier microphone. And then all of your adjustments with this camera as well are just gonna be in the menu. There's no physical buttons and dials for adjusting your audio. All right, last but not least is the actual body and ergonomics of these two cameras. So right off the bat, you can see these are barely even comparable. I mean, the size difference between these two cameras is honestly unbelievable. So first off, the Alexa obviously weighs way, way, way more than the Canon EOS M. Just the body of the Alexa comes in at 13.9 pounds versus 10 and a half ounces on the Canon EOS M. So the Alexa weighs way more, but even digging further into that, for the Canon EOS M, all you need to get this up and running and recording footage with is a lens, battery, and SD card. And with those three things, you can go out and shoot some video with it. However, the Alexa actually needs a lot more to even just get up and running and recording video to start with. So this does not have any sort of built-in monitor for seeing what you're even recording, if you're in focus, your exposure, anything like that. So to just even use the Alexa at all, you're gonna need an SDI monitor, SDI cable, a battery for the SDI monitor, a monitor arm to attach it to the camera, and a big V-mount battery just to power the camera. And of course, a lens and an S by S card to record. So all of that is gonna add even more weight to this already very, very heavy camera just to even get started with recording video with it. But moving on from weight, the features of the Alexa are of course much, much greater than the Canon EOS M. You can see it has all these buttons, on both sides of the camera for you know going through your menus, adjusting settings, and just changing things real quick. It has two S by S card media slots, a ton of ports on the back, tons of SDI ports, an Ethernet port, a power input, as well as of course the XLR input up front here and some more inputs. It has some 3 8 mounting screws, a top handle on it, a separate screen on the side here for diving into the menu without actually blocking you know, your main monitor. And overall, like I said, there's not really a comparison. The Alexa just has so many more features for professional video recording than the Canon EOS M. And then the EOS M, you do have a touch screen on the back here, which is really nice. You have, you know, enough dials and buttons to adjust the main settings like ISO, shutter speed, aperture, things like that. You have your battery slot and single SD card slot on the bottom. And then on the left side, you have three and a half millimeter microphone input, a mini HDMI output, and an AV output. And then you have a hot shoe mount on top of the camera, but that is pretty much it for the body and ergonomics of this camera. That's pretty much as deep as I'm gonna go into the body and ergonomics. Like I said, these aren't even really comparable. This was designed to be a beginner mirrorless camera that's very compact and light and small. It's made out of plastic, you know, it's nothing crazy. When the Alexa was essentially designed to be one of the highest end cinema cameras that professional movie sets used when it was released. And so that wraps up the comparison between an Ari Alexa Classic and a Canon EOS M fake Ari Alexa with Magic Lantern installed. This video took months and months to produce and to write and just do all the testing needed. So I apologize if it was a little bit jumpy and rough throughout. I filmed certain parts at all sort of different times throughout the year, essentially. But if you enjoyed this video, it would really help me out if you went down, hit the like button, shared this video, and maybe left a comment on it as well. But that's it for me. Let me know in the comments if you think the Alexa is worth like 30 times the price of the EOS M with Magic Lantern. Of course the Alexa is better in every way. That really wasn't what this test is about. I just wanted to see how close you could get between these two cameras. So let me know in the comments if you think it's worth the huge price difference and you know, size and weight difference especially. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.